Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Afterglow Live Recap Podcast. My name is Sia. And I'm Erin Greger. And we are the co-chairs of the Dallas chapter of Global Leaders Organization. And we're also the co-founders of Innovation Media Enterprises, just one of the coolest podcast production firms and consulting agencies here in the DFW area. Today, we are welcoming back a very cool uh, Dallas chapter member and also very vocal Dallas chapter member, Mr. Jonas Bull. Welcome back, sir. Thank you and uh, good morning. I don't know, was vocal kind of a shot at him or what was what was that? <laughs> What's wrong with being vocal, guys? You're articulating your needs and wants All and right. desires. <laughs> right. I might have said it sarcastically, but you know, who's judging? All right. <laughs> hey, Jonas, we do appreciate you, though. So, um, yeah, so absolutely. welcome back with Toro uh, Strategic. So, Mr. Chief Thinker, please, for reiteration and reminder, what is Toro Strategic? Uh, Toro Strategic is a, a company that we started uh, a couple of years ago, uh, founded on the idea that uh, if you change the right thing, you can change everything. And we do strategic knowledge consulting, uh, which to uh, expand the buzzwords there, uh, means that we provide research and advisory services uh, to help you expand and develop a corporate strategy around your brand or your technology uh, or just to your directions and process. Uh, because you know uh, these days, uh, People have to make these far-reaching decisions about the technological issues that are constantly changing, uh, and they need to be able to communicate clearly uh, and simply about these these things uh, that are often vague or indeterminate. Um, and so they, you know, they, that's that's what we do is we provide you with the information to make those decisions and help you be able to communicate uh, your, effectively. Your sounds like direction effectively and concisely. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it strikes me is that like Aaron says this all the time is if you're a company, you're a tech company. And the fact that you have mm -hmm. offer advisement when, when it comes to the technology decisions for a business, I think it's so critical and needed. I'm just curious, what's the biggest challenge that you've seen so far from these clients that are you're talking to? What do you think in this pandemic, post pandemic world? Um, has there been a trend that you're seeing uh, businesses asking the same question or is it still kind of all over? Uh, well, one of the things one of the things that we th thought was going to be a problem and did turn out to be a problem uh, has continued to be a problem was not so much the not so much the meetings. Uh, we've been able to to take over the general, you know, just the business meeting with uh, with Zoom calls and 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 so on. Microsoft Teams, you know, whatever uh, platform you use. What we haven't been able to replicate. Uh, except in a very few cases, uh, is um, the just the casual passing by the water cooler, uh, the you know passing each other in the coffee in the coffee room, that kind of stuff. That that's that's what's been very very difficult to replicate. Uh, as you know, I, you know we've tried some things with with the glow chapters uh, to to have better interaction, and uh, and other than a few places who already had a strong remote work culture. Um, who were able to to jump over the hoops a little faster? Uh, it's been that's been very very difficult. Mm. Can you? What are the ones? So you said other than the ones that have had. So what are they doing that's effective? Like how are they? Like what are they doing to to um, get over that? So what what we see was there were usually usually what we saw were there were teams within a group who had a good remote work culture. Um, you know, maybe they were doing some sort of DevOps uh, coding or uh, they were working on, um, you know, marketing projects where they would team uh, up on, on things and work. And those, some of those companies, not even all of those companies, but some of those companies were able to take their lessons learned from that and expand it out to broader sections of the company. Even then, I would say that they're, they're not fully satisfied. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm not a huge fan of having to go to the office nine to five, five days a week, but uh, but there is something that you miss when you, uh, and, and we have really struggled to to replicate that, um, and and taking those lessons from you know that that's in the short version of it, taking those lessons from the teams who are the small teams that are successful, communicate 
uh, often uh, communicate about things that are not work related. Uh, have those have those silly chats and tell jokes and and all those goofy things that you do. Do them on Slack. Do them on Teams. Whatever whatever your platform of choice is. And uh, you know, and just just be more open to those things, and that that's one of the things that has has helped. But uh, you know, that that's the main thing is is from the leadership side, start. You needed you needed to start early, uh, but it's you know, the, if you didn't start then, the time to start is now. Um, being more communicative, being more accessible. Uh, you know, a lot of times uh, we see leaders who who think that they need to be standoffish and they need to have the suit and they need to be perfect all the time. And uh, in this time, nobody's been perfect. Uh, nobody's been yeah. in the corner office because uh, nobody's been in the office. So just just live that and and be more accessible be the example of how you can communicate, reach out to reach out to people that you aren't hearing from because they may be struggling. Yeah. Uh, don't really know how to bridge the gap. It, it sounds like it's almost as if it ties into to this week's Global Leaders Organization Business Acceleration 2.0 <laughs> speaker series guest, Mr. Yeah. Greg Graves. He is the former CEO of Burns and McDonald. Uh, 40 years at the same company, Mr. Greg Graves there. Oof. So with what you were talking about really is resonating, I think, and ties into the crux of his discussion, which was or is um, he's a huge advocate, one of the earliest advocates of uh, employee ownership. So in this pandemic, post pandemic world where everyone's is more or less majority of companies are virtual still, how do you um, create an environment where there is accountability, there is ownership, there is desire to be part of a unit of an organization when it's all virtual. So Aaron, what did you think of Greg's conversation uh, yesterday? You know, I thought it was, I, I you know, there's always going to be the the ins and outs, like one of the things was, okay, if you have ownership, who, who deserves it? Is it just a given if you're there long enough, right? Like those certain perspectives, but overall, I think it's a really great idea because, you know, people want to be a part of something. They want to feel valued. They want to be a part of something. And, you know, as much as the gurus in the world are like, you, you know, you should own your own business. That's the way to free. Like the, the truth of the matter is owning it, and your own business is not for everybody, right? Like, and as long as they feel like they're part of something, that they're valued, that they're contributing, they may love being being in that position for a long time, that they're growing and changing. There's just, there's certain components. It doesn't have to be, you have to go out and own your own business to be fulfilled in life, right? So I, I feel like this could really be the best of both worlds for so many people who, you know what, they're good in the corporate environment. They're good letting someone take the massive risks and they're there to help support and do, you know, whatever it is. But it's that value, it's that, you know, contribution perspective that, everybody wants to that's that's the the utter bottom line and and almost pretty much everyone i mean i think even people who say they don't they do they do and so to be able to provide that um i think is a really really great thing and let them be be a part of something bigger than than just the day-to-day -day grind right did you guys catch when he said that um he would send weekly emails or calls every friday his, every freaking friday i mean did he say he was doing it individually or as a, he always had a communication Friday? It was always a communication Friday, but people would reply to him individually. That's what he was saying. So every Friday night, he'd be replying to those replies. I think that's really incredible. I mean, I just, I, yeah. Wow. That's insane. So Joseph, hey, Joseph on Facebook, 40 years equals 480 months, 960 paychecks, all from the same person. Like that's. That's kind of weird if you think of it that way as an entrepreneur, if this is your business. And he wasn't even, this wasn't his business, right? He well, he was in. a CEO at some point though. Yeah. 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 But yeah, but he came in and, and I think he said he was obviously younger, um, but it, he didn't start the business. That's what's cool. He rose through the ranks and then became the CEO, I think. Right. So, yeah. Um, and that has something to be said about uh, persistence, longevity, commitment. I mean, really holding himself accountable to the business uh, so or you, just laziness. I'm just kidding. I'm totally just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. It's really lazy, but I'm totally kidding. 
I'm about to say that was, that. that was that was Aaron Gregor, Greg. Sorry. <laughs> I was just gonna say, Greg, that wasn't us. Oh my god! You know, I did friend him on LinkedIn. Okay, we're buddies now. Okay, okay. so uh, I'm Sorry, kidding. I didn't mean to say that about your friend. No, no, no. But no, it was interesting though because he could not espouse um, how critical communication uh, was huge, especially uh, when you are trying to cultivate a culture of group accountability and individual accountability. Jonas. Like you're you're talking to so many of these other clients of yours. Are you seeing um, the way communications evolved at all? Like so so obviously the pandemic is a recent thing, but the fact that Greg said, you know, he always had a weekly communication, are you seeing that level of discipline from other organizations or is that something that everyone should aspire to? Well, I think I think the, the, the short answer is yes, but uh, I think what we saw, you know, what, what Greg didn't tell us yesterday explicitly, uh, but, but the was implied from his, you know, talking about the communications, uh, talking about the individually replying uh, to people. Um, you know, Charles, a., Charles O'Reilly, uh, Charles A. O'Reilly uh, from uh, Stanford, um, did some studies a few years ago and was talking about like Southwest air, uh, who is a partially employee owned company and is talking about how, you know, just how much more, uh, you know, how much better their, their employees do on, you know, customer satisfaction and things like that. And it's not about, because they also give some, he also gives some examples of places where it failed, uh, as a contrast. And, Inevitably, the difference was not, you know, some of these places, they spent millions on stock options. You know, they, they released millions of dollars worth of stock options to companies or, or to uh, employees. What they didn't do uh, that Southwest does uh, is uh, they empower their employees. They, they communicate with their employees. They give them the agency to make decisions. The, they do have the profit sharing, but they but they have the time off that they need. They're treated the way that they want to be treated. They're treated like they are a valuable part of the organization, and that I think probably it's not about oh I need to set a, a calendar date and write up a you know a quick summary. That's not the important part. The important part is that you take ownership of that communication, and when you get feedback respond to it or react to it or take take that on board as something that's valuable uh, because that's that's what you're after is what you, you want your employees to know that they're valuable to you and, and are, are worthwhile and that their input matters yeah okay so uh, go ahead Aaron no I was just gonna say that and I always like this is where I go back to on this because I agree let them know what do you do <laughs> So this is an interesting conversation we had last night, though. Like, what do you do with the employees who, I, and I, I guess to my point of this is like, okay, you shouldn't have people around who shouldn't be around, right? But let, let's be honest. Sometimes they're not worth firing because firing can be a, a big deal too, right? Like, you've got to go through all that. Like, it's, they're not worth firing necessarily, but to put, to want to keep them around for another 30 years isn't your thing either 40. 40 yeah exactly so is this something that i you know i work for a certain time i'm entitled to it everyone is this something that you earn and how do you set up that earnings for it or maybe you know you're you're earn, you're owning at a specific level maybe not everyone's equal right like um because everybody should have that value right but um there also has to be, I know um, Jay asked a great question and I know it never really was answered, but it's like, at what point is it earned versus just expected? And do you draw that line as you're setting this up? Ooh, ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough well, one. <laughs> wow. Uh, I've stumped you guys. I know. <laughs> Dang, Dang Nat, well, hold on. I'm just going to use I, the excuse of drinking a cup of coffee. <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I mean, I think, I think there's an, I think there is an answer to that. Um, and, and I was, I was actually, when I was thinking about this, I was actually thinking about the, the opposite example uh, where there are so many times you see companies that, you know, try to set up some sort of profit sharing or some sort of, uh, you know, stock sharing and, and that's it. 
and that they still have this this extremely hierarchical, uh, you know, underperforming corporate cultures and structures. And and you know that gets back to one of the thing, one of the side conversations we had on the on the during the Glow uh, presentation yesterday was about he because Greg mentioned you know needing to focus on your why, needing to have the question of why are you doing this answer. And, and that's it. I mean, that has to be a, a part of part of that. Why had better be, you know, treating your employees and your customers well. And if you set that why early, set that why first, and set those values early as a foundational part of your organization, then you build your management principles, whatever they may be, however flat or, or vertical they may be. You build those management principles and the processes around that, so that your employees have not necessarily that they have a tremendous amount of power to veto a, a you know a, a sale or whatever but that they have the right amount of agency for your organization because that's that's what you know uh, another another uh, guy that uh, i listen to uh, a lot and, and generally disagree with uh scott galloway uh likes to say that greatness is in enabling the agency of others uh, and and I do believe that. I mean, that is where when we find the uh, you know a, an organization, whether it's a, a company or a, or a government, uh, where agency is being taken away from people, it's failing. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. people are being empowered and, and given agency, it succeeds and they overperform. Uh, and we see that over and over and over again. It's funny you mentioned that because it reminds me of a client of ours. So shout out Steve Kwan over at OpsWorks. He actually created an internal uh, podcast for his company right before the pandemic and uh, right actually right when it was starting to happen. And his whole premise of doing this type of podcast internal was because he wanted to ensure that the team, the company, all the members understood all the core values of the company that he outlined and they actually review it as a team. Like they have like smaller teams and they go over each of the, the, the core values, if you will, to ensure that everyone fully understands the why, right. Of the company. Mm -hmm. Now, just because you have your own personal why and there's a company why doesn't necessarily mean they have to be exactly the same. I think you need to understand the why of the company that you're, you know, a part of, to really embrace and again, march the same tune, if you will, which I thought was a fascinating idea to do that, right? Because how many companies do you think of where the quote, there's a mission statement, how many people can actually say what their company's mission statement is? Well, and not even just say, but like really, yeah, like exactly. Like, do you wonder, like, does it really mean anything to you? I feel like you, even with stuff like this that we're talking about, I feel like so many times leaders of companies will do it to check a box. Like a mission statement is the perfect example. They do it to check a box, but does it really mean anything? Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, even, okay, I, I've like, and I think this is why he kept going with the why, right? Like really drilling down. And what we're talking about is yesterday, he must have mentioned like, you don't just do this because it's a tax benefit or yeah. you don't oh, just, yeah. do, just do this to check a box because it's going to make, you really have to understand the why behind it. And I think this is a, as a leader in everything like, okay, you hear that this guy did a Friday email, right? So, okay, well, I'm going to do a Friday email. If, if you're coming across, you're doing this because you're checking a box because this is going to make morale better because you need to do this. It is going to come across that to your employees. Like, oh, great. Here's CEO's letter today. Whoa. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Or if you so, put the ping pong yeah. table in the break room, because that's time the for the employee engagement survey again. Yeah, oh, ex God. exactly. But right. we don't care what they say. I think you really have to mm. understand why you're doing these things because it's just so easy to go through and be like, okay, this, this person's doing this, so I'll do it too. When you have no meaning behind it, people are going to like, they're going to see right through that. I had a, Justice. um, Go ahead, Jonas. Well, I was just I was just noticing that Joseph has pulled us back to to Aaron's uh, question a while ago, which I which I had a fully intended oh, yeah. answer. <laughs> okay, but, but I, I don't think I did. Um, so you know, part of part of that, you know, building those building your management principles and your processes 
on that solid foundation of of your why means that should mean that your culture that you've built within your company doesn't reward people who don't fit in that culture. So most of the time, most of the underperforming people in that culture are not going to be happy there anyway, and they're going to leave on their own. They're going to want to be out of out of that because uh, in a certain large company that delivers stuff to people all over the place, they have a corporate corporate culture that is very driven and very very performance oriented, and a lot of people don't like that. They want to they want to get quickly. On the other hand, sometimes you get somebody who is uh, apparently very high performing. Uh, Men's Warehouse, for example, uh, several years ago, fired one of their top salespeople. Uh, very like top 10 percent sales guy because uh, he was poaching customers from people. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, oh. and OK, you could you could say, OK, well, th but this is one of my top sales guys. Maybe I just need to counsel him a little bit. And but if somebody's poaching customers, one of, you know, one of your sales team is, is poaching customers. That's not only driving the morale of your sales team down, but your customers know something's not right. Like, right. why are, why are those guys standing around and this guy's, you know, chasing all over the place and, and grabbing people? Why can't I talk to Bob that I, that I like better? And, and you know, so there, there comes a time, you know, where, where you have to make a choice. Do I want to, do I want to keep the guy who's apparently a high performer, but who's also cheating his, his coworkers? Or do that, I want to get rid of that guy and and well, take the hit on on training and, and so on? Yeah. And in men's warehouse case, their sales actually went up after that. Interesting. They stuck to yeah. their values. Exactly. Uh, right, exactly. You got to go back to your core values, because if, if you're going to back up someone that is got some questionable baselines of, of uh, you know, their morals, if you will, it's going to affect the business no matter what. And the brand, ultimately, it's like that rotten apple, right? Um, it will reek and ruin the rest of the bunch and probably, be, if anything, demotivate everyone else, right? To see like, oh, look, the cheater, cheaters winning and right, getting right. all the accolades and, uh, you know. Or will it cause other people to cheat? If he's winning at cheating, then I need to cheat, right? Yeah, and right. now you've got like a whole team, not just one person against your values, but you, and they're putting out the a bad name. Bottom. Yeah. And then before, you, before you know it, you're the Houston Astros. I know. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> that is the only sports reference I'll ever make. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I heard it on a podcast like two weeks ago. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but, but, you know, Jonathan has to bolt, it looks like, or are you bolting? Team killers, locker room. Oh, had lock, locker room guys? Okay. Oh. Yeah, so Jonathan, yeah, when he bad, played. Bad locker room guys. Yeah, so Jonathan bad played locker. pro oh. baseball, right? Like, yeah, I was trying to figure out what that meant. Like, by the way, I was like, he locked room with guys? You have to, you have to, you have you to lock, learn how to you, translate Jonathan's. You locked messages. the bad guys in locker rooms? What? I don't understand. Go ahead, though. Sorry, Jonas. <laughs> they probably did that, too. Probably. <laughs> exactly. 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 So, okay. So now here's a question um, I thought was interesting. So his son is part of the business and um, he was just talking about how, um, yeah, it's great to have stock and ownership in the company, but he said his son flat out said the woe moment for him was the bonuses. So it's not just simply saying, Hey, I'm going to give you some shares or, Hey, you've got, you know, access to voting on certain issues or whatever. It was the actual like, Boop, surprise, you know, pops at the end of whatever duration, quarter, half year or year end bonus. Is, do you think that is, um, I hate to say it, does money talk to help keep people motivated, you guys? When it's cold, hard cash versus, you know, something intangible like stocks? Yes. I don't know if it has to be one or the other, but money always helps, right? No, no, In, all, of the, all of the studies that people have done on, on compensation – suggest suggest that uh that money is a motivator up to a point and that that beyond a certain point which uh worked out to be you know in the neighborhood of uh, 175 to 200k beyond that it's not really the motivator uh that that you would think uh and and that you know w for most people 
not not everybody, but for for most people, that beyond a certain point, it just no, it just stops being it stops being the main motivator. There are other that other things start start taking taking precedence. In other words, basically that that there are other things that we value as much or more than just compensation. That we we still you know again not everybody but but most most people most of the time would like to feel that they have some some ownership they'd like to feel like that they have some control over their environment uh in addition to needing to make enough money to be comfortable that's i'm laughing i think the mistake that, that we make a lot of times with especially like the with the uh employee ownership things is that we're we equate the the financial ownership so you have some stock so you have the financial ownership where we equate that with psychological ownership and the psychological ownership doesn't originate from money but rather from feeling that you're heard feeling that you're a valued participant and that you matter which goes back to the agency well, I was just thinking like a combination of both. By the way, I was chuckling when you said 100, 100 to 175K or something like that. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, no, let's bring it back down to like <laughs> to, to, to the, the real world. The real world. Actually, the number I had heard, now granted the stats is older, but it was like 75K for the general population. That once you get past and, and 75K, you, right. you kind of I mean, get a diminishing return of satisfaction of money to lifestyle equivalency or something like that. Yeah. But that being said, neither here nor there. I, I think there's something though to the instant bonus though, too, to be yeah. able to have that, you know, there is that ownership and I think salary, you know, I think we could agree goes, but I think there is something to being, having that uh, instant gratification. I don't know if it's the right word, but like that I can see results immediately. I can see that my contributions actually did help. And there is something to that instead of, yeah, stock ownership is nice, but some people do like, you know, I mean, look at how we are as a world, right? They, they like their participation trophy uh, versus waiting till the end, right? Yeah. yeah well, and, and that's, that's actually, that's a very good point. I know we're almost at the end of the hour. Um, Half hour. One of the, one of the companies that, I've, that I did some, some work with on specifically on compensation for engineers, so we know how to compensate salespeople pretty well. We can we know how to compensate executives pretty well, but but we're trying to compensate consulting engineers. And the bonus structure that they had built, the the engineers had zero control over it. Like they if if they were assigned to a project, then they would get a bonus, but they had no control over that. So we were we were trying to find a way to to restructure that so that it was based on something that the engineer that was one built up their position as a, as a valuable employee two made them feel like they were a valued employee and, and three, and perhaps most importantly, gave them some control over that bonus. Uh, and, and that again is, it goes back to, we certainly love the bonus, but, but we want the bonus because it's something that we did. I don't, you know, I don't think, uh, I don't think anybody wants, uh, you know, a participation trophy just for showing up and falling asleep under the desk every day. Well, it's not. Yeah, that's not. That's not. I'm not okay, like, oh, look at how many people are sitting collecting unemployment right now, Jonas. Just saying. True. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, there are, you know, and there, there is that, but yeah. Uh, well, but no, I think also, I also know of a case where where we had somebody uh, give us little cheap twenty five cent uh, gold star trophies. For uh, for you know for some little uh, metric that that we had had to hit, and within you know everybody th everybody thought it was stupid, but by three months in, everybody was competing for those little gold yeah. star trophies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we had the most, by the way. Well, look at the stars on the helmet, right? For fo like for football teams, right? They're silly yeah. little stickers, but they mean a lot. But they mean something. They mean exactly. You performed. It goes back to the authenticity of it. And again, going back to the core, share cord values, right? So if it's something that you guys can align to, I can see where that accountability, that ownership, that pride, right? In being together, right? As opposed to individual pride, like the men's warehouse person that got fired. There's, there's something that's really good about that collective feel good moment for everyone that's successful. I don't want to say it's like a, you know, it's not like trying to say it's a communal thing, but there is, Positivity is infectious 
and it, it encourages and inspires, which I think is the gist of this whole, you know, conversation of employee owned, you know, businesses, however degree it might be, there is something to it. And I think it's definitely worth investigating for entrepreneurs, especially as all our businesses are growing and accelerating because, you know, we're global leaders organization members. We're going to be kick booting everywhere. Right, everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are wrapping up on time. So I was trying to pull it back. I was trying to pull it back. So Aaron, uh, any final thoughts and uh, what can we- Well, first let's see Jonas, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you before I wrap up. Oh shit, up. shoot, shoot. I'm pointing to you. Uh, <laughs> so so yeah, uh, bull at torostrategic.com. Bull, last name bull at torostrategic.com uh, or LinkedIn. Um, or if you want to, you could really promote that cool podcast that you do live yeah. every Wednesday. Is, is there is there a podcast? Is there a podcast? Oh yes, Noonish. That's right. Noonish. Got to be got to be one of the best podcasts, most fun and interesting and entertaining podcasts. Uh, talk about sports, technology, business, and whatever else crazy stuff comes up. Exactly. Where, we'll have, where we'll do they have, find that? We will. That, that's it. Yeah, you find that at uh, at noonish dot live or noonish underscore live on Instagram or uh, Facebook, um, and uh, we'll have the uh, we'll be talking to the DOC, the NWA, this week. Nice, very nice. It's like I've got songs running through my head now. Thanks right? to that. Just yes. All right. Um, very excited about that. So, what is Glow, Aaron? <laughs> GLOW stands for Global Leaders Organization. It's GLO. As Sia said, it is an organization that really gathers uh, entrepreneurs, not just at any level. You do have to have a certain criteria to get in, but this is part of their Business Acceleration 2.0 series. Every Thursday, they go live. So we'd love to have you join us. As premium members, we get back behind the scenes of the VIP. Unfortunately, I missed the VIP. I had a call at 11 I had to get to, but... Um, yeah. So there's, and then if you're part of Dallas, uh, C and I would love to have you join us. You can have a head over to with glow, G L O.com. Check that out. And we'd love to have you sign up for a premium membership with us. Yes. Yes. Cause we're the cool cats and Dallas always represents. And so we have a really good community that's building up as things open up. We will be doing uh, in-person events, um, but we are also mixing it up with uh, virtual events as well, just to keep in contact with one another. So next week, you guys, uh, the next Business Acceleration 2.0 speakers, we are welcoming Dr. Harville Hendricks and Dr. Helen LaKelly Hunt. And they're talking about safe conversations. Ooh I am not good at this one and I'm learning and uh, it, it's tough, you guys, because how it, what they're going to be talking about is learning to have conversations to talk about criticism, listen without judgment and connect beyond differences, which I think in this day and age uh, as a society, we could all use a little bit more of. So if you are interested, go to WITHGLO.com, go uh, click on events and you'll learn more information about Dr. Harville Hendricks and Dr. Helen LaKelly Hunt. I think that wraps it up for another great episode of Afterglow Live Recap Podcast. Everyone be safe and we will see you next week. Bye, everyone.